Hey, I'm Kaya, and I've been obsessed with killer clowns my whole life. I don't know why, it's not like there's anything inherently terrifying about them, I mean like to me anyway. Well, hello beautiful. But whether it's the makeup, the balloons, or the big floppy shoes, there's something about clowns that just makes people's skin crawl. What's the matter kid, don't you like clowns? Why? Aren't we f***ing funny? And with a new incarnation of It About to Feast on Our Fears, I got to thinking about what makes the best killer clowns stick in our psyche. It takes more than just throwing on some makeup and baggy pants to turn a regular person into living nightmare fuel. <laughs> so to get you hyped for the second coming of Pennywise, I've compiled a list of my favorite killer clowns. Let's start with the granddaddy of them all, my all-time favorite, the Joker, because I mean, really, who else? Wait till they get a load of me. He's not the first killer clown in literary history, but I can't imagine one with a bigger impact than Mr. J. I've demonstrated there's no difference between me and everyone else. All it takes is one bad day. That's how I went crazy. And I'm smart enough to admit it. Why can't you? He's got more incarnations than we can possibly fit into this video. Stay tuned for a yellow spandex, by the way, because that's gonna be my favorite video of all time. But whether he's a ruthless, unpredictable gangster, a psychopathic serial killer who's so insane it's basically a superpower, or somewhere in between, this homicidal maniac always leaves his victims, and me, smiling. Let's put a smile on that face. Even the kid-friendly Cesar Romero-style Joker still gets a kick out of your pain and suffering. Low torpedo tubes! I love a killer who stays on brand. That's like what makes Seven so good. Oh, uh, what's in the box? Not you give me the what's gun. in the box? Now, if you want to talk commitment to a theme, look no further than the killer clowns from outer space. The monsters in this cheesy 80s classics aren't even technically clowns. They're just an alien species that happen to look like them. I guess in the infinite universe, there's gotta be at least one planet out there where the dominant species evolved into monstrous clowns who drink people through crazy straws. I mean, so I'll allow it. I love how every aspect of their civilization is tied to a circus motif. I mean, can you imagine these aliens coming up in evolution and the events that led to this kind of lifestyle? What are you gonna do? Knock my block off. <laughs> the killer clowns travel across the universe in a spaceship shaped like a big top tent, and they wrap their victims up in cotton candy cocoons. <laughs> they shoot deadly popcorn and attack their victims with acid pies, killer balloon animals and shadow puppets somehow. Holy shit! The movie's just a schlocky 80s cheese fest, but it has so much damn fun with the clown motif. Another great killer clown comes from season four of American Horror Story. Twisty is not your typical happy-go-lucky homicidal clown. He's got about as tragic a backstory as you can think of. I mean, the poor guy was dropped on his head as a baby and like things only got worse from there. At the end of the day, Twisty's just a guy who wants to make kids happy. I don't think kidnapping them and killing their parents is the way to go about it, but cut the guy a break. He shot half his damn face off. Like, as much as I love a sad clown running around maiming people, Twisty's backstory really sold him as a sympathetic villain. It's a parade. Don't mind him, folks. He's just a little bit kooky. If you want a balloon, you're gonna have to pay me. That's all right. We love everyone here. Come on down. By the Come end, on. I was actually rooting for him. Granted, I root for a villain nine out of ten times anyway, but still. Now, the violator is just a shithead. Oh, no, I thought... Oops! Oh, what, what? I hope I didn't stain my underwear. He doesn't have the big plans like the Joker or the murderous appetite of Pennywise or the good intentions of Twisty. The violator is just an asshole babysitter stuck wiping Spawn's butt until he figures out how to use his magic hell suit. Shocked and amazed at the wonders of Mecha Flesh. Also, he's just a lackey to a giant cat devil thing, so that kind of like alleviates the fear. But the violator makes a great foil to spawn as a straight man, and he helps bring out the absurdity of an otherwise serious story. Are you done with this Hallmark moment? Because I can't take any more of this sentimental crap, come on! If you want a more down-to-earth killer clown, there's always Captain Spaulding. After his debut in House of a Thousand Corpses, Rob Zombie expanded his role in the sequel, The Devil's Rejects. If you ain't got a reason why you hate clowns, I'm gonna kill your whole family. He's not an alien or a demon or anything like that. He's just a sick man who sells fried chicken and gasoline and runs a serial killer museum on the side. I mean, let the man live. First of all, 
Fuck you! I love how much pride Captain Spaulding takes in being a clown. He's like the polar opposite of Joe Pesci and Goodfellas. But I'm funny how? I mean funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. Let's take a step away from movies for our last few killer clowns. Me, I've always been a sucker for Sweet Tooth. The only thing scarier than a killer clown is one that's running you down in an ice cream truck strapped with heat-seeking missiles. He's had a few incarnations over the Twisted Metal series, but my favorite is the one from Twisted Metal Black. With my execution, there must have been over a thousand people gathered outside to watch me fry. I was upset about that. There should have been more. Right when Sweet Tooth is about to be executed for a series of brutal murders, a preacher puts a curse on him just as they flip the switch on the electric chair. His head bursts into flames and stays that way, burning him day and night with the fires of hell. Sucks for him. It's not exactly a subtle design, but hey, it's not often you actually get to step into the oversized shoes of a killer clown and control him yourself. Let's go back even further than the PS1 and talk about Are You Afraid of the Dark? Now, I've been immune to the fear of clowns since I watched that dream sequence in The Brave Little Toaster. God. Every time I ask my friends, where did the like fear of clowns start? They almost always say The Brave Little Toaster, and I'm just like, I didn't get it. Maybe I f***ed up, I don't know. Now, there's actually a ton of kids entertainment that features terrifying clowns. Most episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark don't really seem that scary in hindsight. It's the most fun in the park when you're laughing in the dark. Honestly, the ones about killer clowns are some of the only few that hold up. There's Zebo, who will f your life up if you even think about stealing his nose. You don't see a ton of him, but whoever designed that dummy in the funhouse must have a direct connection to my nightmares. But I think the ghastly grinner was a lot more effective. After a kid nukes his comic book in the microwave, it somehow brings the main character to life, an absolutely horrifying yellow jester named the ghastly grinner. <laughs> he had the power to brainwash people just by laughing at them. Like the Joker's scary, but at least he has to like gas you. The grinner just cackles in your face and boom, you're like a blue drooling zombie. These two were way too scary for Snick, but in terms of terrorizing kids, they don't hold a candle to Pennywise the Dancing Clown. There's a lot to admire about Pennywise. His hair, his smile, his ability to stuff eyeballs and bird fetuses into fortune cookies. But above all else, this is a clown who loves doing his job. Even when that job is eating small children, Pennywise really commits. Don't you want it? 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 He literally feeds off fair, but it doesn't really take much to scare a kid. I mean, all you have to do is show them the Zebo episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? But he just loves what he does, and he takes utter delight in crafting the most horrifying, hideous deaths for his delicious prey. You all taste so much better when you're afraid. He didn't need any prosthetics to be horrifying. Just traditional clown makeup, some jacked up teeth, and one brilliant actor was all it took to make one of the scariest f***ing things I've ever seen. <laughs> Bill Skarsgård's new Pennywise has a tough act to follow, but I like what I've seen so far. You'll float too. Time will tell, but it is shaping up to be a worthy addition to the killer clown posse. Hey guys, I'm Kaya. So these are some of my favorite killer clowns, but I don't know if I left out any of your favorites. So let us know in the comments below what clown scared the crap out of you when you were kids or even now as adults. And as always, stay subscribed to Now This Nerd.